So I'm giving it instead. That's fine because it would seem a little braggy if Cal Flora got up here and said Cal Flora is the best thing to ever happen to California botany. But I can say it all the time. Uh, I'm a little nervous, first of all, because you are a lot of people. And second of all, because uh, my current boss, my former bosses, my current co co-workers, my former co-workers, and a lot of my friends are in the audience. And I'm here to tell you guys, you Wrong when it comes to botany. I'm super dependent on Cal Flora in every way. But you all know Cal Flora. It's a digital plant library for plants in, Cal or in California. It provides all of the information that you ever need in a great, really well usable format. And you can use it for anything you want. Uh, it has over 12,000 species. So anything you see in Cal Flora or in California, you can Google on Cal Flora and make sure you identify it correctly. It has two and a half million plant locations, so you can solve what I like to call the almost rhombifolia problem, which is you're in a new place and you see a plant and you think you recognize it and you're like, that can't still be almost rhombifolia, it's still almost rhombifolia. And instead of keying it all the way through the key and wishing that you were dead because keys are no fun, uh, you can instead just type it into Cal Flora and be like, oh, it is here, I did know that, and then pat yourself on the back. It has relationships between old and new plant names, so if you're working on a wetland delineation and you have correctly identified Salicornia pacifica, but it is not on the wetland plant list for some reason, you're tearing your hair out, when you Google it in Cal Flora, Cal Flora will be like, an alternatively accepted name is Sarcocornia pacifica, which is on the list, and it's obligate, which is, it made me feel like 50 pounds have been lifted off my back. It is the best way to look at plant photos, which, like, whenever I key out a plant, I like to then look at the photo and make sure that I didn't make a terrible mistake partway through. Uh, and, of course, they have a lot of users and contributors because it's the best. It's amazing. So, another thing you can do is if you're bored, you go to Cal Flora, you think of a plant you're interested in, you type it in, you look at it, you see pictures of it, you see variations of the plant, you see the distribution, and then you see that, like, Salicornia, Salicornia Pacifica has a weird little thing in the Southern Sierras, and you click on that and you find out who collected it, if they're wrong, or if it's a weird range extension, and then you could publish something. Most likely you click on it and you find that Dean collected it, and then you write Dean and say, why did you do this? And then he fixes it. Which is not so great if you're, for instance, writing this talk last minute and you're trying to find an example of something that Dean did and you swear there were 50 like 10 minutes ago, but someone is on it, whether it's Dean or some extremely dedicated data uh, manager, but I can't find any of them. Great, fine. Uh, but also, as a botanist, people keep on assuming that I know things about what they can do with their garden which is completely false. I know this much about horticulture. You put the roots in the ground, you put water on the plant, sometimes you add fertilizer. But people, especially people who are not botanists, are always like, I would like to put native plants in my yard, and I believe that this is a good thing. And then they're like, what should I put in my yard? I'm like, Manzanita? <laughs> But they have their new uh, planting guide where you click on the planting guide link on the front page and it takes you to a map and you zoom in on an area. My parents are from Mount Shasta, so 70% of my requests for what I can have a native, or where native plants for gardens come from my parents and their friends in Mount Shasta. So you zoom in on an area with a similar, uh, with a good scope of plants and you say whether you want it to be a low water plant or a high water plant or a shade tolerant plant and you click search and it gives you a list of plants uh grasses herbs uh shrubs trees vines it's great and then you can click on them and see beautiful pictures and see how beautiful they are which is yet another service that botany or the calflora makes you look way smarter than you actually 
you might be, if you're anything like me, and you want to keep a big chunk of your botanical brain outside of your, outside of your head, because your head can only hold so much data. But we have Calflora, which is a great way to outsource that. You can look it up anytime you want. They're amazing. You should give them money. <laughs> Thank you so much.